Hey guys, today we are driving the all new 2023 Mazda CX-50. I am super excited to get behind the wheel of this and show you guys what it's like. This is a hotly anticipated new crossover from Mazda. A little bit larger, a little bit longer, wider, lower than the Mazda CX-5. It competes in the same class, but uh, a little bit more of a premium offering from Mazda. It's produced in Huntsville, Alabama, alongside some Toyotas in a separate line, but they share the same manufacturing plant. So that's cool that it's made in the United States. Doesn't share any parts with Toyotas, but Toyota and Mazda are sharing some manufacturing processes, supply chain things, stuff like that. This is a really exciting offering from Mazda because I think this is kind of the perfectly sized SUV. The CX-50 that we're in today is the Premium Plus package, which is the top trim. It comes in just over $40,000. And there's actually a pretty big price spread between the base model and the premium models in uh, these, the CX-50. So this is a turbocharged 2.5 liter Sky Active motor that makes 256 horsepower on premium octane, 93 octane, and 227 horsepower on 87 unleaded. Uh, you can also get the naturally aspirated 2.5 liter four cylinder in the more base trims. That makes 187 horsepower and 186 pound feet of torque. Every Mazda CX-50 comes standard with all wheel drive. And actually that's a new thing with Mazda. All of their crossovers and SUVs come standard with all wheel drive, even the CX-30. They nix the front wheel drive CX-30. Anyway, let's walk you around this all new CX-50, show you what it looks like inside and out. There's a lot to talk about here, a lot to discuss, a lot to go over. Let's start on the outside and look at the way this thing looks. I think it's a very sharp looking SUV. Love the colors offered in this CX-50. This one has 20 inch alloy wheels. There's also gonna be a Meridian off-road edition coming out later this year. That'll have 18s with all-terrain tires. This is the more grand touring, luxurious CX-50 though that we have today. Love how wide these fender arches are. We've got some plastic cladding down here too to add just a little bit more of a rugged appearance to the CX-50. This has 8.6 inches of ground clearance, quite a bit of off-road capability too. Mazda's goal with this car was to create as much off-road capability as possible with a traction control system and uh, the G-vectoring control without compromising on-road driving dynamics. And I think they've done a really nice job. We've got an off-road test route that we're gonna be exploring later today. Let's show you the back seats. This is an interesting feature that they've added. This has a 90 degree, wait for the trucks to pass. This has a 90 degree opening rear door, which is hugely impressive. Really nice for loading car seats into the back or putting stuff on the roof racks. The CX-50 has a strengthened roof. You can really put a lot of weight up here. Two, three passenger folding rooftop tents. Um, yeah, there's a lot of accessories that they're gonna offer with the CX-50. It's oriented towards people who want a more adventurous and rugged vehicle, which I think is a nice market to chase after. In the back seat, we have a lot more space back here than we do in the Mazda CX-5. I'm five foot 10, sat behind myself. I have tons of leg room, plenty of room underneath the seat to put my feet to. We get heated rear seats, heated and ventilated front seats, as long with, along with a heated steering wheel. We also get Mazda's first panoramic sunroof. Adds a nice airy open feel to this cabin. It's not the most open panoramic sunroof I've, I've seen. You still got this pillar here, but I guess it's a step in the right direction. Love these seats, very nice leather, very plush, very comfortable. We have a pretty big armrest here in the center. A really nice looking interior. I like what Mazda has done with their design. This is kind of similar to the Mazda CX-30 and Mazda 3's interior, but with a slightly more rugged twist. You get this centerpiece right here that's covered in leather with contrast stitching. A little bit more of a muscular dashboard too with these vents sticking out and protruding from the dash. A uh, really nice steering wheel, really nice use of physical controls and buttons. We get the same climate control setup that we do in a lot of other Mazda products. And uh, really it's just a very functional and easy to live with car. Uh, we just sold our Mazda CX-30 and we really loved the way it was to live with on a daily basis. And the CX-50 just improves upon that in some very small ways, which I appreciate. Let's hop out back and show you trunk space. We have a power operated lift tailgate. 
a nice flat low loading floor look at this completely flush right here so you don't have to lift cargo up and above we get a compact spare tire back there along with a bose i don't know if that's a subwoofer or uh, what but 12 speaker premium audio sounds great you can fold down the rear seats flat just by pulling those levers and look at the size of that cargo space that is huge very wagon like in this CX-50, almost kind of a split between a wagon and an SUV. A little bit lower of a roof, but the, the width and the length of this cargo space is enormous. I love cars like this because that means I can just throw my mountain bike in the back without having to take the front tire off. Once you fold down these rear seats, they're easy to put back up. Just gotta get the seat belt out of the way. And everything pops back in. Super easy ISO fix points to fit a car seat. These seat belts uh, fold flush right into the seat there. These 90 degree opening doors are so cool. I wish more manufacturers did that. So, nice looking crossover SUV. Kind of rugged, kind of premium. It's a nice blend. Let's pop the hood, take a look at this 2.5 liter turbo sky active motor. This is rated for 23 miles to the gallon in the city, 29 on the highway for about a 25 MPG combined rating with this turbo. The naturally aspirated 2.5 liter gets about 27 miles to the gallon combined, a little bit more fuel efficient. Not bad for an all wheel drive powertrain. Takes 5W30, accepts premium fuel, accepts regular fuel, put whatever you want in here. There are sensors that sense what you're putting into the gas tank and adjust the power level accordingly. A lot of standard safety features too. This also comes with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, wireless as standard, even in the base model. The base S CX-50 comes with an 8.8 inch touchscreen and every model above that comes with this 10.25 inch touchscreen. And I'm saying touchscreen because it is actually finally a touchscreen, but only in Apple CarPlay. So Mazda's reasoning with this is the Mazda UI was kind of designed mostly for the scroll wheel, but Apple CarPlay was designed as a touch screen and you can swipe, push buttons a little bit more accurately in the system. It's still a little bit of a reach for, as a driver, but honestly, Mazda, I think, nails their ergonomics with how they interact with the infotainment and everything. I found that after living with the system for a few weeks, you develop some real muscle memory with how everything works. You have these quick access buttons for your music, your navigation, uh, home, and it's all integrated beautifully. Uh, this is such an easy car to use and live with, and I'm glad that they stuck with what they use in a lot of their other model, Mazda products with the CX-50. There's a lot of customizability in deep in the vehicle settings. You can go in and you can change the turn signal volume, uh, various safety settings. Uh, one thing I really appreciate with this new CX-50 is that uh, if you put it into gear, handbrake automatically turns off. It doesn't wait for you to tap the accelerator. So Mazda fixed that. That's a really nice improvement. We have pretty clear and nice looking 360 cameras too. There's also a button to the left of the steering wheel where you can enable your camera view. If you need that for off-road driving or just a tight city parking environment, you can use that whenever you need, which is pretty cool. You've got a couple other buttons over here, a button to turn off the auto stop start, which is the first that I've seen from Mazda traction control off, a parking sensor off button, and all of your uh, active safety systems off. You've got two memory seat settings and a button to pop the tailgate there. Auto up-down windows on all four corners. Let's talk about materials. So I gotta say I am actually a little bit disappointed with some of the door panel materials in the CX-50. I was hoping for slightly nicer uh, grab handle plastics. And I don't know, the finishing on this leather with this cross stitching, it looks a little bit shiny, it looks a little bit over polished. I'd like a similar material to what do we have on the steering wheel, but a minor gripe. I was just expecting something a little bit nicer. You've got some plastic down here at the lower sections of the door panels. But overall, for 40 grand, this is a really nice interior and it drives great too. Let's, uh, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about on the inside. There's a whole lot to go over with the CX-50, uh, but I think let's, head out onto the road and get started with a drive. We get three different drive modes. We have normal, 
sport and off-road. Let's start off in normal and talk about what that does. This is just kind of your do everything drive mode, daily driving, normal situations behind the wheel. Traction control is actually pretty liberal in normal mode. It will prioritize driver inputs over limiting wheel slip, which I really appreciate. Basically all that means is Mazda's traction control system is very in the background, very unintrusive. And normal mode is actually the preferred drive mode for snow and winter driving because it does have that liberal um, character to its traction control. If you're on a back road and you want to engage in some more spirited driving, you can engage sport mode, which we'll explore a little bit later in this video. That'll kind of crank up the transmission, tuning, it'll hold gears, it'll downshift under hard braking. Very nice mode for spirited driving on a back road. We also have paddle shifters behind the wheel. They feel pretty similar to every other Mazda. Nice and responsive. It'll actually hold gears in sport mode and manual mode until you push through the kick down switch on the accelerator pedal and then it'll upshift, which is nice. Do I have any complaints about the CX-50 on this initial drive? Well, I do have one. There are a lot of chrome reflective surfaces and edges on the interior. And on sunny days, you do get a lot of reflections that are pretty bright and somewhat blinding on the edges of these uh, HVAC vents down here on the gloss black. I wish Mazda would start implementing some matte finishes, especially into these kind of high traffic areas down here. This gloss black isn't gonna age well and it does reflect sunlight quite a bit. In this Premium Plus package, we have a head-up display that shows us a lot of different information from our cruise control setting, to our speed, to our navigation directions. You can also program it to uh, show you this current speed limit. It'll recognize speed signs, stop signs, uh, with its camera-based system and tell you what the speed limit is right now. Let's switch up the scenery just a little bit. We'll head out onto a back road and see how this handles, and then we'll do a little bit of a highway test loop. All right, we're on a very twisty section of Canyon Road here. Let's get some driving impressions on what this is like to push around some corners. So we are in sport mode. G-vectoring control is turned up to its max. Transmission's doing a nice job holding gears, letting me ride out that meaty torque curve. And at the limit, this feels pretty good. Brakes are holding up nicely too. For the size of this crossover, it's surprisingly athletic on a back road. This does still feel primarily front wheel driven, and it is. It's a very confidence inspiring athletic experience behind the wheel and kind of fun to drive around a back road. In keeping with Mazda's history and current philosophy, it's doing a nice job out here. Surprisingly quick too, this uh, does sneak up on you sometimes with its speed. I haven't felt the need to use the paddle shifters much today. The transmission, if left to its own devices, is doing a pretty good job. Ooh, yeah.
of these systems in the background are working according to steering angle and braking and accelerator inputs. Moss has done a really nice job developing all of these systems and we'll see some more of that development in their off-road mode later today where they have one off-road mode that is tailored to do everything in every type of off-road environment and that's speed dependent and incline dependent. Put us back into sport mode for this corner. It is nice to drive on some proper driving roads again out here in California. Okay, right now we're in some California traffic and steering assist is active at low speeds here, so it's gonna navigate us around corners a little bit. It's not the best active steering system that I've used, but it definitely is an improvement and nice to see this being implemented into newer Mazda products. Adaptive cruise control is very smooth and seamless and natural feeling. It's doing a really nice job blending speed differentials. Uh, it's maintaining a pretty close following distance with the vehicles ahead of us, dependent on speed. Uh, it's prompting me to put my hands on the steering wheel about every 10-15 seconds or so. And uh, again, in traffic, I wouldn't really want to rely on these systems, but uh, it is good to kind of take an active participation in bumper to bumper traffic just to stay out of people's blind spots. But in a pinch, if you need to use it, uh, this is a pretty good system for heavy traffic and uh, take some of the driving fatigue out of uh, driving in traffic for me, at least here in California. You can easily change your speed by five mile an hour increments by holding the plus or minus buttons. And you can switch between active steering assist and just traditional adaptive cruise control very easily by pressing these two buttons here. Acceleration is a little bit sluggish if you're just relying on the cruise control to get you up to speed. You can always give it a little bit of help with your right foot in which case that 256 horsepower kicks in and you've got plenty of get up and go. While we're just cruising here on the highway, let's go in and do a sound system test. So we've got Apple CarPlay connected wirelessly. We can go into our music app and we can actually use CarPlay as a touch screen, which is great. Use Waze, turn up the volume listen to this Bose premium audio system. Spending some time in this Mazda CX-50 makes me really appreciate the button layout of this cabin interior. You have a volume knob right down. It's very handy that you can just reach down and turn or on your steering wheel controls. You can quickly change tracks by sliding over on that volume knob down here or using your steering wheel controls. Very straightforward, very simple. The audio system is great, very similar to what other Mazdas sound like especially the CX-30, maybe even a little bit more of an improvement. It's a slightly more bass heavy and a richer sound system. Of course, this is a much larger sound space. One complaint that I do have about the steering wheel buttons is it sometimes is a little bit easy to accidentally mute 
be audio. Uh, you're trying to maybe raise the volume slightly. And you can press in on that button, and uh, it's not the clearest uh, differentiation between press in and press up sometimes. We're just cruising around in normal mode. Super stable at higher speeds. A little bit more wind noise as you get up past 80 miles per hour, but it is also pretty windy out today. You really do feel this lower, wider stance out of the CX-50, even though this has 8.6 inches of ground clearance, it drives like a much lower and uh, sport-tuned crossover. Transmission programming is awesome in normal mode. It picks exactly the gear that you want. It doesn't downshift too much when you ask for power. And I'm noticing that the throttle tuning in this CX-50 is really nicely done. It's very progressive, very linear. I found that in the turbocharged Mazda CX-5, the Mazda CX-30, it's a little bit difficult sometimes to not speed. That initial throttle tip-in was so aggressive that uh, you initially were going into boost pretty quickly. And in the CX-50, I can modulate my speed a lot easier. I feel like I don't have to rely on cruise control to keep myself from going too fast. There's an additional weightiness to the controls in the CX-50 from the steering to the accelerator and brake pedal. And I like that. It makes this car feel very solid behind the wheel. We're putting a lot of miles on this today, more so than we usually do on press trips. And these seats are very comfortable. I love the visibility. The usability of this cabin space is also so nice. There's not a lot of distracting elements. There's not a whole lot to really uh, get your attention away from the driving experience. I do feel like you would be wanting for a little bit more power in the naturally aspirated 2.5 liter. This turbo is just kind of the perfect amount of power for a vehicle this size. 256 horsepower in this is just about right. It's not as quick and uh, maybe spirited as the CX-30 turbo or the CX-5 turbo signature, but it's well matched for what this car is and uh, kind of... I. I would probably swing for the turbocharged powertrain in this CX-50. I will reserve my judgment to the uh, naturally aspirated 2.5 liter until I drive one, but I have a feeling that's going to be a little bit underpowered. Still though, it might not be bad. This is only about a 3,700 pound SUV. It's not super heavy. It's under 4,000 pounds, which I think is pretty impressive. For a vehicle this size, under 4,000 pounds, I mean, it's lighter than a lot of other options out there on the market, but it feels hefty and it feels solid, which I think is a kind of a cool trick. Boy, look at this scenery. This is amazing. Just gorgeous. Nice Toyota 86. I really do think Mazda has achieved what they set out to do with the CX-50, and they've done a very good job at it. This is an excellent alternative to a more uh, higher-end luxury brand purchase, like a BMW or an Acura or a a Lexus, or if you want to step up from maybe a more economy-oriented car, this is a great upgrade. All right, guys, well, how can we sum up this Mazda CX-50? I think there is really a lot to like with this new car from Mazda. It's kind of that Goldilocks right size for a crossover. It has enough off-road capability to get you pretty much wherever you need to go, to your camping trip, to your destination without really compromising any on-road driving dynamics. And in the sea of off-roaders these days, I think that's an important thing. It's also pretty fuel efficient for its size and the fact that it's all-wheel drive. Again, I'm gonna be uploading a completely separate video for the off-road test in the CX-50. I figured combining everything would just be a little bit too long and drawn out. But overall, I've gotta say, on first impressions, this CX-50 really does deliver. It's got a nice feature set, a really nice price point spread, you can make this as luxurious and feature-rich as you want. And uh, if you want something under 30 grand, this is a great option too. So the size and the packaging here, I think is the big highlight. 
uh, the powertrain, the way this drives, it's all not really that big of a surprise. It drives a lot like a lot of other Mazda vehicles. It does a really nice job for what it is, but this is just kind of, I think, the perfectly sized SUV, and uh, I think Mazda's gonna do really well with this. The CX-5 is already their best seller. I think the CX-50 is kind of the, uh, the next best thing from the brand, and a really nice move in a premium direction with a little bit of a rugged, off-road, and adventurous feel, which I think is a very smart move on Mazda's part. All right, guys, well, that's gonna wrap up this video on the CX-50. Thanks for watching. Excited to get some more time in this back home in Michigan. But for now, this has been a really enjoyable first drive and uh, very glad to come out here in sunny California and get some time behind the wheel. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.